Well, hello, my paranormal peeps, and welcome back to another Deep Woods Paranormal Podcast. My name is Matt Harvey. I'm the founder and lead investigator with Deep Woods Paranormal. Along with my wife, Amanda, we investigate everything paranormal, be it Bigfoot, UFOs, ghosts, cryptic creatures, uh, haunted locations, demonic activity, poltergeist, UFOs, aliens, you name it. If it's paranormal, we investigate it. River monsters. Forgot to add that one in. So. Uh, I hope everybody's doing good. This is the uh, going to be the cryptid podcast for the week. Uh, we're kind of rotating through the different podcasts. We have, uh, I think we have six or now seven that we do. So I'm going to try and get a podcast out pretty much every other day if I can. Um, so we're just going to try and get that out. And days that I, there's a, isn't a podcast, I'm trying to put shorts onto our um, YouTube channel. So let's get right into this. Let me share my screen with you. I uh, don't mean to share. Okay, I guess I did mean to share this. Hold on a second. Oops, let me move me out of the way. Let me go over to our actual channel, which is where I should have been in the first place. Okay. So this is a Deep Woods Paranormal uh, YouTube page. Uh, on here, we have uh, lots of different things for you guys to watch. We have investigations. We have podcasts. We have shorts. Uh, we have uh, Bigfoot research, um, you know, you name it, we pretty much have done it. Uh, we haven't done a lot, oops, we haven't had a lot of alien uh, investigations because we haven't really found a lot of evidence. So, I mean, I don't really want to post something out there and uh, have you guys go, oh, that's great. You went out to a location, looked around and didn't find anything. Good job. <laughs> and, uh, you know, have multiple videos of that. So until we actually... Are lucky enough to actually document some UFO activity um, when we're planning on doing it. Uh, we're probably not going to have much uh, paranormal uh, alien or uh, UFO stuff. Uh, we will talk about it. We might visit locations that have um, reported UFO sightings and stuff. But uh, anyways, all right, so that's not what I wanted to actually get into. So anyways, we've got some paranormal shorts. Uh, here we go. Let me go to this. Oops. Go to this playlist if I can get to it. There we go. So we just uploaded a couple new videos here. Um, I don't know why this is taking so long. This is not it, but okay. Okay, and it's going to continue to play. All right, so let me just go over to videos. Here we go. All right, so yeah, we just... Uh, Uploaded this short. Uh, we're going to be, up, like I said, we're going to be uploading quite a few shorts in the next little while. This one's coming out Sunday. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, bear with me here. So, yeah, we got two different um, shorts that are coming out. One that just came out. We also just did the Bigfoot Only podcast. Uh, thank you guys so much. It's already gotten 106 views. Uh, I know that's not much in the, in the YouTube world, but uh, for us, that's, that's rocking and rolling. Uh, another thing I noticed on our YouTube channel is that a lot of our, our subscribers are uh, they're subscribed, but they're not actually watching the videos. So if there's something that we're missing or that you'd like to see or you want more of, um, you want us to try and go some, do this or do that, as long as it's paranormal in nature, um, let me know. Uh, if, if if we're missing the ball here, I want to make sure that uh, we're uh, trying to you know get as much out as much content out for everybody, all, all of our paranormal fans. So again, thank you guys again for uh, all the new subscriptions. Welcome to all the new followers. Uh, we appreciate you. Um, welcome to the Deep Woods Paranormal family. Uh, we're going to continue to do uh, more investigations and more gear testing, uh, more podcasts. And then of course I'm going to be putting together, I am putting the show together right now. I'm in uh, contact with quite a few different people and we're going to go out and start investigating the locations and then we'll bring it to here 
like once a week or every couple of weeks, we'll have that investigation uh, on here for you guys. It'll be like sh- like the form of a normal show, but we will try and document. I know everybody says, oh, well, you know, why don't you show the ghost or show the, the Bigfoot or whatever? Uh, we'll do our best. We'll, we'll try and uh, not make it like other shows. Uh, we're going to have, it's going to be like a combination of seven or eight of the most popular shows all in one thing. So, Stay tuned for that. Okay, I didn't come on here to talk about that. I just wanted to let the subscribers know if you're not hitting that notification bell, you're probably missing out on some of our videos. Uh, we do have over 300 videos on here. Uh, we do have a lot of content. I'm going to be shooting a uh, gear testing video here shortly. Um, it'll be probably be a short. I'll probably put it as a couple of shorts and then maybe it was one long video. So if you guys want to watch it, I'll try and keep it under five minutes. Um but I'll show you, you know, I'll do a couple of quick clips of uh, things. So anyways, now I saw that. Okay. So yeah, basically if you want to come in here, if you're not a fan of YouTube and I understand I've I've talked to so many people lately, uh, I don't really like YouTube. Well, that's cool. No big deal. We're over here in rumble too. Uh, This is our rumble channel. Let me uh, get myself out of the way. So this is our Rumble channel here. Um, and again, all this content, I'm trying to make sure whenever something comes out on YouTube, it comes out on Rumble at, you know, within a day or two. Um, so some of this stuff doesn't just, you know, sometimes you'll see duplicates in here. It's just because we um, have had so many uh, delays in getting stuff up. I'm just posting it because I don't want to wait three or four days for it to come up on here from across from our youtube channel so anyways um this is the newest one i just investigated a uh or just was out in an old historical town and uh was walking around and i'm like holy crap that house looks so haunted uh in a little town called smithville texas if you're from smithville and you live in a haunted location um contact us you know all of our information is down below in the description from wherever you're watching uh, okay, and so again, this is the Bigfoot one. This just caught on to here. It's only got a couple of views, so it will get more content. Here's our uh, dog man. This did really well over on our YouTube channel. And these are our podcasts, but there's going to be another video coming out here on Sunday as well. I wanted to make sure everything came out at the same time. So we're just starting. We just started this channel, what, three or four months ago, maybe a little longer. Uh, we've got up to 243 followers. So if you're not a YouTuber um, and you'd rather come over to to Rumble, we'd love to have you. All right, let's move on. Um, Again, we are are sponsored by Manscaped. So if you're interested in their products, just put in the uh, discount code of DWP, and that will get you a nice little discount on anything you buy from here. Um, And then just tell them Matt sent you. And then also people keep asking, you know, again, all this is our audio podcast. If you uh, want to subscribe over here, we're on you know a bunch of different places. This is not all the places that we're listed. Um, we're on, I don't know how many platforms, 60 platforms, I think. I've completely lost track. So anyways, we're on a lot of different platforms. Um, also, all the descriptions to everything you hear me talk about, again, is down in every description, whether it's the YouTube channel, the Rumble channel, or here. All right, so let's move on. Okay. All right, so let's talk about Wisconsin. And again, this is the Cryptid Podcast. So we're going to be talking about cryptic creatures. And cryptic creatures can be anything from Bigfoot to Yeti to river monsters to lake monsters to... Um, Pretty much anything unknown that isn't ghosts or, um, you know, dog man is also considered a cryptid. Uh, if it's not a ghost or a haunted location or something like that, it, it basically is uh, classified under um, the cryptid. So this one's actually kind of interesting. Uh, this is the Whitetail Cemetery and the Witches of the Triangle. So supposedly in Wisconsin, we're going to talk about six different things here. Um, like I said, I typed in cryptids and, uh, six different things came up. So this is not all 100% cryptids, but, uh, I found this one to be very interesting. So it says everyone has heard 
of the witches of uh, Whitewater. But did you know about the the uh, Whitewater cemeteries? The cities of uh, Whitewater have three cemeteries, which make up a perfect uh, isolus triangle. The three cemeteries are Cavalry Cemetery on the north side of campus, Oak Grove Cemetery on the hill next to Washington Elementary School, and Hillside Cemetery adjacent to the Calvert Lake. Cal, excuse me, Cravarth, Cravarth Lake, C R A V A T H Lake. Um, I apologize if I just completely butchered that. Um, and then it's also known as the Witch's Triangle, which is kind of cool. Uh, I don't know if a witch is a cryptid or not. Uh, I think witches kind of have their own classification. Well, maybe we'll do a podcast about witches one of these days. Because there's different types of witches, and we'll, we'll get into that later. I don't want to continue on. Okay, so there's a story that says in the 1970s during Halloween week, the coffin of a little girl who was recently buried was placed on the, on the, small, on the mall of campus. It's placed on the mall of campus. Uh, it is sus. It's, it's a, bleh, can't even talk today. It's suspected that it, it was taken out of one of the three Whitewater cemeteries. Many people thought it was a, a sick joke. However, two fishermen had seen strange lights floating over the Calvary, Calvary Cemetery the night before. Okay, so I think they're hinting at UFOs or aliens or something like that. And aliens and UFOs are are basically cryptids so (laughs) you're not (laughs) anyways um okay so let's talk about this again let's see let's see another legend says that the oak grove cemetery uh, is the resting place of mary worth and uh, an axe toting murdering miss an axe toting uh murderous oh reminds you of somebody like lizzie borden um, we're not sure if she did that or not yet, but uh, who knows? Says the legend also says that Mary can be seen along the uh, tombstones on Halloween Eve. The grave of Morris Pratt, the founder of the Morris Pratt Institute, can be found in the Hillside Cemetery. The Morris, Morris Pratt Institute is known to be the start of the Whitewater hauntings because this was a school for spiritualism. Many people have reported drastic temperature decreases within the barbed bar fence of the Calvary Cemetery and seen strange shadows moving around uh, in the middle of the night. So that's like a shadow person. That's very common. Shadow people are seen a lot in different haunted locations. There's a lot of theories on shadow people. Uh, maybe one of these days we'll do a full on invest, you know, basically a podcast about them all right remind me i'll try and get that done next week all right so it says one story uh, from the witches white water of whitewater facebook page says that i used to used to walk my dog in hillside as i visited my grandfather's grave a storm was approaching the one day around dusk my mom wasn't with me suddenly our dog stopped running around and froze all the hair on his body went straight up and out. As he was a collie, this was striking. He was uh, staring down into a, into a hollow. My mother then said, "You better go down there. You better go down there and tell those kids to get home before the storm hits." I did not see any kids. What kids? I asked. The ones down there. I don't think Bobo likes them. Bobo had bitten a kid who was teasing him, and uh, since uh, he was not so fond of, of kids, I liked, I looked at Bobo. He was growling deep in his throat. I looked at the area uh, he was staring at. I don't see any kids, I said. They are right down there dancing around, my mom said. Uh, I said, let's go. Let's get Bobo into the car. We will drive down there. Um When we got down to the hollow, I said, see, there's no one here. My mom said, they were just, they were just here. Look around. Maybe they're hiding. I got out to walk, I got out and walked into the hollow. I then realized this was the infant and child uh, burying ground. There were many children's graves. Rather than being scared, I laughed. I knew Hillside. 
I got back into the car and my mother said, did you find them? I said, yes, they are leaving now. <laughs> so she basically plagiarized her mom. Uh, these are just a few of the creepy stories along the cemetery of Whitewater, uh, Wisconsin. Many historical facts about the Morse Plants Institute and stories about other haunting experience can be found in the link below. So there's a link to uh, the Witches of Whitewater. So basically, they're just saying that the witches basically um, haunt this area. It's kind of interesting. Um, it might be something in interesting to look into later. Um, if you're in uh, Wisconsin and you've had, you know, investigated these locations or you know about this story, uh, please, you know, feel free to contact me. And uh, you know, maybe you want to come on the podcast and talk about it. All right, so let's move on to the next one. So seems like Wisconsin has quite a few uh, sea monsters or lake monsters. So this is the Rock Lake Sea Serpent. It says, through the years, many uh, folks' stories, many folk stories have uh, centered on the Rock Lake and Lake Mills. Some uh, concerned, <laughs> some concerned, some concern pyramids at the bottom of the lake and others sound similar to the story of the famous Loch Ness Monster. I'm not sure if I said that right. Bear with me, guys. I just got a new pair of glasses, and they're a little different than anything I'm used to. Um, but they're awesome. I mean, they're just really, really good. And uh, I'm still learning how to read out of the bifocals because they're different than my other bifocals. So bear with me as I read through this. It says, in 1882, after being quiet for 15 years, the Rock Lake Serpent appeared, apparently reared its head uh, at two boaters as they raced across the lake. According to the newspaper account in the Lake Mill Spike, the two men thought they were seeing a log in the water just ahead of their boats. As they approached, the monster thrust its head three feet out of the water and opened its huge jaw before it dove underneath the water. The serpent was said to be as long as a boat and the color of a of a pickerel. I don't know what that is. Um, you know, somebody else might know it. Uh, it says, although this, uh, other sightings have occurred over the years, the monster continues to be elusive as a Loch Ness monster. So that's interesting. Um, this might be look, worth uh, looking into further. Um who knows? You know, they basically let's say it looks a lot like the Loch Ness monster. Um, I think Wisconsin, Wisconsin should be like landlocked. What people don't know, and I've talked about this before, is that um, Loch Ness is not landlocked. It actually has canals that go out to the ocean. And they get sea life in there. They get whales and all kinds of the sea life that comes into the lock from time to time. And then they swim back out. So, anyways, um, that's pretty interesting that they're comparing that to Loch Ness Monster. Okay. Okay, here's another lake monster for you. Again, this is all in Wisconsin. i got to go back up to Wisconsin one of these days. This is the Devil's Lake Monster. The Devil's Lake Monster or emd emd walking in this uh, Sioux language mean, meaning mystery or bad spirit is an unknown aquatic creature that is said to be uh, to reside in the depths of Devil's Lake located north of Lincoln City, Oregon. Oh wait, what? This is Oregon. <laughs> okay, it said Wisconsin when I looked it up originally. Okay, so we're gonna jump to <laughs> we're gonna jump to Oregon for just a second. Bear with me here. Some say that the octopus-like beast was original, uh, was responsible for an untold number of deaths, but the Nakota Indians tell a tale about a, a uh, struggling creature which is un uncanny, sim uncannily similar to the alleged uh, extinct plesiosaur. Again, you go back to almost every lake monster or river monster they have, and they all um basically have the same type of thing um they all you know basically call it, look like a plesiosaur all right um let's see so it says a legend 
excuse me, one of the earliest legends involving the creature of Devil's Lake revolves around the Native American Indian chief who assembled an expedition of young warriors to go on a late night hunting trip uh, on the fauna fertile lands across the lake. Uh, the full moon reflected off the night black it, <laughs> the full moon of the night blackened waters as the young men and their leaders slipped into canoes. Uh, the water had begun <laughs> okay, this doesn't make any sense. The, the full moon reflected off the night's blackened waters as the young men and their leader uh, slipped into canoes, slipped the canoes, slipped the canoe, the water, and began their late night trek. I'm sorry, this there's some grammar issues on here. Suddenly, a fury of tentacles ripped through uh, the surf, capsizing the canoe and pulling the, the thrashing, terrified men beneath the blackish, brackish water, meaning dark, murky, muddy water. Although no one survived this ill-fated expedition, their screams altered, uh, alerted fellow tribesmen who rushed onto the beach and were able to bear witness to this horrific, horrific event uh, in, in grisly detail uh, due to the moon's light leering glow. Uh, the surviving warriors of the tribe in order to pay homage to their fallen uh, brethren, as well as uh, appease what they believed to be the demon of the lake, had a festival every year during which gifts and animal sacrifices were thrown into the water. Okay, so it says basically those that continues on today. So, if you... Um, I just found something out very interesting the other day. So, the octopus is a species that actually may be alien in nature. They don't know where this octopus came from. Um, we'll do a deeper dive into this maybe on another podcast too. But octopuses are not, um, they're not really uh, known from Earth. Uh, and that's all I'm going to say about that. They're basically, they don't know where they came from. They can't seem to figure it out, and they, they're starting to think that maybe they came from an asteroid, or maybe they came from somewhere else, and, uh, you know, came here from another planet or something. Anyways, all right. All right. So this is Devil's Lake State Park, uh, and this is says it's protected by the Thunderbirds. All right, so... This is basically, um, it says Golden Eagle over Devil's Lake State Park. And this is basic, I'm guessing this is a, a picture of the lake back in the, let's see. I'm just looking for a date here. It doesn't say the date. Okay, so, oh, they're saying the picture up here is, is a uh, Golden Eagle. Golden eagles are pretty good size. I think they're a little smaller than a uh, bald eagle, but they're pretty good sized. So, I mean, this could be completely a misidentification, but who knows? It says, looking back, lake spirits and monsters were thought to live in, Devil, uh, live in Devil's Lake since the end of the last ice age, some 10,000 to 12,000 years ago. In the late 1800s, when the first settlers came to the area, the locals whose ancestors had lived here since that uh, last gl uh, glaciation told stories of a uh, battle that ultimately uh, created Devil's Lake. And it says, Thunderbirds are everywhere within the history and culture of Native Americans. Thunderbirds were strong, massive creatures were large enough to uh, lift humans right off the ground and carry them away. While each story has some uh, variation, it says generally the Thunderbirds were uh, the good guys who controlled the upper world and sometimes kept bad people in line. It says the underworld was often controlled by water spirits. Uh, it says some says uh, some said that the Thunderbirds were creating created specifically to control water spirits. So it says, well, our story tells tells of us a long ago battle 
that had been fought right here where Devil's Lake is located today. The Thunderbirds um, led a full-on assault on water spirits who were inhabiting the depths of an un, an un, unnamed body of water that existed here far back in, in the history. Since the Thunderbirds would fly high into the clouds and fire thunderbolts down into the water in the surrounding shores. The water spirits fought back by throwing large stones into the air and creating water sprouts. A uh, swirling tempest from the depths of the water would rise to ens ensnare the thunderbirds and pull them down. The um, pitch battle went on for four days. Interesting. It says, in the heat of the battle... Trees were ripped to the ground. Even stone cliffs were uh, split, crushing and crumbling under the enormous firepower of the warring spirits. The land was said the land was laid to waste, and uh, the lake created. And of course, now you know this, the lake is surrounded by broken rocks and boulders. Even uh, when the first surveyors arrived at Devil's Lake in the 1800s, they described described it as a place. That has uh, was hard to move through as a lakeshore. Oh my gosh! And it took them a full day to navigate. If you pull out a uh, photograph from the uh, beginning of the last century, you can see the bluffs lake. The bluffs look much different, and dare I say, more war scarred than they do today. I'm not going to read the rest of this. So essentially, they're saying that there was. Some kind of battle, probably between good and evil, if you will. And these creatures had abilities to, you know, use the the lightning from the sky uh, to try and go after the lake monsters. And the lake monsters basically had the ability to, um, you know, create water spouts and stuff. I don't know if all that's true, but uh, a lot of stuff in Indian history is. It's, it's interesting. I'll just put it that way. Um, yes, there is some truth to it, but there's some tall tales in there as well. Um, you know, did that really happen? Who knows? I mean, you got to make up your own mind. Uh, but the natives basically, you know, they were here a long time before we were, and they saw some things that were pretty interesting. They also um, have, you know, were the ones that basically had seen Bigfoots and possibly lived alongside them in some places. Okay. So, let's keep going. Okay, here's another, another lake monster. Okay, so it says, Wisconsin's Lake Winnebago water monster. And it says it eats and it eats deer and moose. So, again, bear with me, guys. My glasses, um, my bifocals on these, uh, you can't see them because they're hidden. But um, it's, it's sometimes a little hard to see. So if you see me kind of looking up, that's because I'm trying to look down into the bifocals. And I might be misreading words because of it. I'm not used to these yet. I honestly just got them about uh, four or five hours ago. So it says, rumors and folklore about the Lake Winnebago water monster uh, took me down a Google rabbit hole that I couldn't get out of. What the hell is going on? says, this creature from, from the water in Lake Winnebago in Wisconsin has a large appetite. Rumor has it the water monster uh, the water monster enjoys eating deer, elk, and even moose when it gets hungry. So wait, is that it? It says, so wait, it's so big that it'll take down a moose and that thing's in the lake? I wouldn't, I wouldn't be swimming in that pool. Very Thank you very much. He says, uh, so there's, here's the skinny on the not so skinny fish monster. It says it would, it would apparently, it would apparently wait on the channel. Let's see. No, it would apparently, I think this is just like another bunch of um, problems with how they wrote it. Okay. It said, it, I'll, I'll just kind of make up my own thing here and I'll read it the correct way it said it would appear uh, to wait along the channel in the Fox River and uh, basically it would get ready to devour its next large meal uh, so I guess it basically ambushed its prey it said the locals were so scared that boating fishing 
going near the water was out of the question. It says at some point, uh, men noticed a large dark form uh, in the water. It it was it was Buddy the Lake Mon- Winnebago monster. Uh, now, depending on the website you visit, uh, it's dead now or maybe alive. Uh, I have uh, children that live in the Lake Winnebago area, and uh, they say it still attacks animals. Okay, so again, guys, you got to take all this with a grain of salt. This is this is kind of interesting. Uh, we should do a whole deep dive in on some of these animals. So this one's called the where'd it go? Uh, Buddy. It's called Buddy, the Lake Winnebago monster. So, like I said, if you're if you're interested in that and in uh, lake monsters, I am. And I know there's a lot of different sightings of possible things that people don't understand. Let's just put it that way. In several lakes, not only in the United States, but all across the world. So I would be interested one of these days to go out and to where these sightings happened and, and see what I could see. And uh, you, know, you guys could hopefully, we'd hopefully document it and let you guys see as well. So let's get to the last one here. Oh, my goodness. Got every dog. Got every dog we have in here now. Okay. All right. So speaking of dogs. Okay. So the beast of Brer Road in Wisconsin. We've talked about this on this podcast before. For those of you that uh, haven't heard of the beast of Brer Road, uh, it's called the beast of Brer Road, a human, a, a hairy humanoid with canine features that has been uh, sighted in the Wisconsin area dating back all the way to the 1930s on a rural road outside of Elkhorn, Wisconsin. It says, uh, more recent sightings in the 1980s and 1990s were uh, uh, placed the creature in Racine, Walworth, and Jefferson counties. So essentially, you know, if if you have an animal like this, uh, and this is supposedly some kind of a dog man, they would have to have, I mean, to live through you know, be seen and stuff to live through time and stuff like that. They'd have to have a whole um, colony or a group of them. There couldn't just be one. I mean, unless these things live for thousands of years, hundreds of years, uh, which I don't believe they probably do. Uh, it's like a, a dog man. It's kind of like a werewolf, if you will. And so essentially, you know, that basically is, what they're saying this thing is it's it's got the body it's, it's just like a giant werewolf and essentially what it does is it it uh grabs the roadkill off the roads and sometimes these things have been known to attack cars and to growl at people and to glare and scare people as they drove by because they didn't know what it was until they slowed down and got close and then as they get close they they you know they actually have their headlights on this thing and they get a full-on view of what it is, and they go, oh, my gosh, I'm out of here, and they speed off. So, anyways, all the links to this stuff will be down below. Um, you guys can come back on here and check it out. Um, if there's any other cryptos that you guys want to hear about, please uh, leave a comment down below. Um, if you're on one of our podcasts, do me a favor, platforms. Because we're on so many podcast platforms, uh, it's hard to see all of your comments. We don't always get notifications, so you might be sitting there and saying, oh, I'd like to see this or like to see this or hear this, hear about this. Um, Comment on on our website. Go on to our website. Go on to our Facebook channel. uh, Message me through Facebook if you want. Um, You you can always contact us through. I, I always leave my email and my cell phone there. Uh, and if you've experienced any of these creatures or you're a paranormal investigator in Wisconsin and you'd like to talk about these things in more depth, we'd love to have you come on and talk about it. So feel free to reach out to me and uh, come on the show and, and uh, we'll sit there and enjoy hearing you talk about this stuff. So anyways, guys, um, apologize for the shorter podcast tonight. Uh, I'm a little tired. I've just had a really long day nonstop. I still have another 
couple of videos I got to do. Um, again, watch, be watching for a couple of video shorts. I'm going to be um, testing out a new IR flashlight that I just got. And I'm, I mean, I'm hoping that I'm not disappointed. I really am. But I'm hoping for the best. Um, so we're going to be testing that out. And you guys are going to see, um, you know, with along with me, if we can actually see uh, more than about five or 10 feet clearly with our other camera, our big camera. And, uh, you know, I've been told that basically that's what they use, the big film companies use uh, when they're out shooting videos uh, in, in infrared out in the um, wilderness. So we have multiple different types of cameras. We have full spectrum camera. We have IR binoculars. We have binoculars that also see an IR but they pretty much have their own little um, IR flashlight on them, a very bright spotlight. And both those record, but they don't record sound. And then we have a couple of different uh, types of uh, cameras also um, that record in IR. So we'll have to test it out and see which one uh, works best with that. But anyways, guys, um, let me put this back. Let me stop sharing. So again, if you guys would like to be a guest on our show, um, you know you have something you want to see on the show, um, there's you know something that uh, you want to know about, uh, please comment down below, and or contact me, and uh, we appreciate you guys, and we will catch you on the next one.